NTD's sister media The Epoch Times briefly appears in Marvel's latest superhero movie, and one Chinese state-run media outlet isn't pleased. But the newest film isn't the only one facing Chinese censorship. Spider-Man No Way Home and others were also blocked from Chinese releases. What does the U.S. really know about Beijing's space development goals? A top NASA official says not much. Fire breaks out under Shanghai's lockdown, leaving residents in one residential building locked inside. And for those watching our full episode, the Ukraine war enters its sixth week. U.S. officials say they are keeping a close eye on China to make sure it doesn't help Moscow bypass sanctions. Welcome to China in Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. The latest Marvel superhero movie, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, is premiering in the United States this weekend. But those wanting to watch it in China could be out of luck. The movie is unlikely to get a release there. NTD's Don Ma has the story. A Chinese Communist Party-owned media is outraged about the new Doctor Strange movie. It's not helping the odds of the movie getting a China release. What is it mad about? It's this scene here. This is the newspaper box of the Chinese language edition of the Epoch Times. The Epoch Times is also NTD's sister media. It's known for its coverage of current affairs in China, including the Chinese Communist Party's human rights violations, Beijing's propaganda and influence operations abroad. But did Marvel Studios put the newspaper box in the movie on purpose? Movie producer Chris Fenton says it's unlikely that this was purely accidental. Shows that they know every frame of that movie, what's in there, and the continuity experts, the script supervisors, and everybody in post knows exactly what props are used. So the idea that the 200 to 300 people on set that day and the 200 to 300 people in post-production over the course of post-production did not notice the Epic Times vending stand in there, it seems very far-fetched. When Chinese state-owned media The Global Times saw the Epoch Times box, it was less than happy about it. It published an article over the weekend smearing the Epoch Times and calling the inclusion of the newspaper in the movie shameful. The Global Times article was published on May 1st, and on May 2nd, the Epoch Times found 44 of its Chinese language boxes vandalized with graffiti in New York. The deputy editor-in-chief of the Chinese language Epoch Times says the Chinese Communist Party is involved in the vandalism. The Epoch Times newspaper box appeared in a blockbuster movie. The CCP didn't feel good about this, so they sent people to graffiti our newspaper boxes. This is what they always do. This has happened many times. Every time we report on a major incident about the CCP, they vandalize our newspaper boxes. Doctor Strange has been submitted to the Chinese authorities for review, but chances of approval are now looking slim. Well, I think the idea of this movie getting into China is probably now non-existent. It's unknown if Marvel Studios will keep the Epoch Times newspaper box in the movie. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is hitting theaters this Friday and is expected to open up to $200 million at the box office. Don Ma, NTD News. But it's not just Doctor Strange running into problems in the world's biggest film market. According to Puck News on Sunday, Spider-Man No Way Home didn't receive a Chinese release either. Because the country's authorities wanted Sony to remove the Statue of Liberty from the film. But just how big of a request was that? If you haven't seen the blockbuster, the entire final battle is fought on over and around the Statue of Liberty for over 20 minutes. Somehow changing or removing the landmark would have cost millions of dollars. The studio immediately rejected the request. Chinese censors then suggested cutting certain patriotic shots of the statue or obscuring Lady Liberty's face. According to Puck's sources, Sony considered it, but ultimately chose to forego a Chinese release. The company likely could still have gotten into Chinese box offices by making the changes. But removing such an iconic American symbol wouldn't have been a good look for the studio. Plus, the edits weren't guaranteed to satisfy China's regulators. Besides, for Marvel, the Chinese film market isn't what it used to be. 
That says Marvel's Shen-Chi and Eternals were shut out of the country for perceived insults to China. Shang-Chi star Simu Liu and Eternals director Chloe Zhao were labeled as traitors in China for their previous criticism of the ruling Communist Party. Earlier, we mentioned how the appearance of an Epoch Times newspaper box in the film angered China's Global Times. Let's take a closer look at the newspaper and why Chinese state media reacted so strongly to its brief presence in the movie. The Chinese edition of the Epoch Times was founded in the U.S. back in 2000 by Chinese Americans who had fled communism. They sought to create an independent media to bring uncensored information to Chinese-speaking people around the world. The paper has been banned by the Chinese communist regime since its inception, and some of the newspaper's reporters in China have been put in prison. Right now, it's the most influential Chinese-language newspaper outside China. In 2003, the English-language edition launched its digital version. Today, the print newspaper and its digital counterpart is published in 36 countries and in 22 languages. The Chinese communist regime views the space as a must-have tool for modern warfare. But how much does the U.S. really know about China's space program? NASA Administrator Bill Nelson testified before the U.S. Senate Appropriations Committee and explained. China's plan for its space development. A report from the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency says both China and Russia see space as a must for winning modern wars. In recent decades, the race to space has only gotten bolder. Now it's going a step further as nations look to weaponize space. That means the safety of satellites may be at risk. And threatening those can impact everything from the ability to pump gas into cars to withdrawing money from banks. China's next step in its space development efforts is to launch three more astronauts into space this June. They'll dock at China's newest space station. But beyond scheduled launches, what does the U.S. really know about China's space program? NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said not much. He recently testified before the U.S. Senate Appropriations Committee on NASA's fiscal year 2023 budget request. Now, China is completely a different experience for vis-a-vis the U.S. space program because there has not been any transparency. Uh, They are very secretive. So it's been a very strained relationship with the Chinese space program. What is the extent of cooperation with uh, Russia, between Russia and China? I'm simply not sure. He also commended the U.S. government for constantly supporting nuclear energy and went on to emphasize its importance for America's journey to Mars. Because that nuclear propulsion would give us a way to get to Mars quicker. And if we can get to Mars quicker, then we don't have to stay there for a long, long time until the planets realign. Since the 1990s, different countries have successfully launched unmanned missions to the Red Planet, including the U.S., China, the former Soviet Union, Russia, India, the United Arab Emirates, and European Space Agency. Next, an update on the situation in Beijing. China's capital city closed scores of subway stations and bus routes on Wednesday. Officials also extended COVID-19 curbs on many public venues. According to the city's service provider, more than 60 subway stations and nearly 160 bus routes were shut down. Officials also said they'd extend closures for certain public places, like schools, restaurants, some businesses, and even residential buildings. But they didn't give a time frame. This is becoming too much to bear for some. A woman is in tears as she voices her dissatisfaction with the restrictions. Well, 
With dozens of new cases a day, Beijing is mass testing its residents for the infection, hoping to find and isolate the virus before it spreads. This week, 12 out of the city's 16 districts held a second round of tests, with one more still to come. Restrictions in Beijing are very severe. I can't even go eat anywhere. I feel oppressed. I did the PRC test every day and I know that I am not sick. I did not get infected, but I still feel caged like I was sick. I feel these restrictions are excessive. They make people agitated. They can't bear it. At the same time, the city plans to cut down the time people spend in quarantine facilities when they arrive from overseas, from 14 days down to 10 days. That's according to what an official said Wednesday. But foreign arrivals will still need to isolate at home for seven days afterward. Beyond Beijing, other Chinese cities are also making adjustments to their COVID-19 curbs. According to an official statement from Tuesday, central China's Zhenzhou city will impose new week-long rules. Schools in the main city district will shift their classes online, while staff with the local government and nearby companies must work from home. It's not certain whether the restrictions will lift after one week. Zhenzhou is home to over 12 million people. It's also the site for Apple's iPhone manufacturer, Taiwan's Foxconn. The company confirmed it would continue production there. As companies and public services adjust to the changes, residents quickly responded to the news. The day the notice was released, locals packed the streets. Crowds were seen rushing to grocery stores to stock up on essentials for while they're working remotely. This is the first time since last summer Jinjo has caught the public eye. That's after last year when severe flooding hit the area. And over in Shanghai, a new video captured in the city is circulating on social media, catching the moments when a residential building in the Pudong district caught fire. The entrance to the building was locked from the outside at the time, part of Beijing's zero COVID-19 policy. Authorities believe the strict rules will block the virus from spreading. People inside the building could be heard banging on the door and shouting that they couldn't get out. Later, someone arrived with a key and opened the door. After residents poured out, some people entered the building to try to put out the blaze. Shortly after, a man rushed out the door. No local media outlets reported on the incident. We could not get any information about possible casualties. Even home may no longer be a safe haven under Shanghai's lockdown. Take a look at this 10-second clip. Six police officers from Shanghai's Huangpu district broke into the home of two women on Sunday, claiming they tested positive for COVID-19 and must be moved to quarantine. The officers were wearing personnel protective equipment, but didn't have the women's positive test reports in hand. The officers first started knocking on the door when they arrived, claiming they were sent by the community's committee. From the other side of the door, one of the women explained that she tested negative and was still waiting to review her results from the local CDC. But the explanation didn't dissuade the officers. Instead, they broke into the unit. One of the women said they would call the police, but the man responded that they are the local police. The woman, whose test results were questioned, was taken to a makeshift isolation center. She later shared online that the retest result came back negative. That's not the only lockdown video causing a stir. In an unknown Chinese city, an old man was seen begging for food on the street. He told a truck driver he was a migrant worker, but was starving under lockdown. <laughs> Moments later, the truck driver the man spoke to gifted him several bananas and other food. The man was quickly moved to tears. <laughs> 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 
that's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here. After being demonetized for more than a year, here's what to look out for in our second half. U.S. authorities banned two drugs from the American market. The medications have gone through clinical testing, but not in the U.S. The Ukraine war enters its sixth week, and Washington is keeping a close eye on Beijing-Moscow relations. And Indo-Pacific alliances are getting a boost as a number of countries take action. Our full episode can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful it leaves you in awe, so inspiring it changes your life, so beautiful you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun, an all-new production every year. The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life changing.